Jamel. Alexander here with Real Talk. I'm speaking with... Davey Holmes. Davey, so rumor has it you're here to tell us about... Oh, the spoiler from season three, right? No spoiler. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I tried, okay. Um, tell me what it's like. Is it fun to take creative liberties, to take a, a known franchise, a movie that people have seen a lot, um, and kind of reinvent it in a way and, and add your own flavor to it? Or was there some pressure to that, too? Oh, it was very scary. Uh, on some level, you know, uh, Elmore Leonard is is respected to, to a degree where you, you don't want to take it lightly uh, running with a story that, that comes from him. But it was also very exciting uh, and freed us up to not just do yet another version of the same story or a watered-down version of the movie, for instance. Right. And... Um, so we got to go off in our own direction with our own tone. We're much darker and grittier than the film, and I love the film. Mm -hmm. um, and our characters have their own trajectory and their own worlds that we get to discover, which means there's real surprise and excitement for us in that process. Uh, and that's really fun. That's really fun. Speaking of fun, and, you know, three seasons is an accomplishment with any TV show in this yes. industry to, to last that way. How do you, for, for an average kind of person at home doesn't know, like, um, how do you prepare in advance for, you know, a, a arc, uh, seasons ahead when you don't know if it's going to get picked up or not? How do you go a, a, in advance and visualize a show and, you know, not knowing if there's going to be additional years? How do you approach that? S season by season mm -hmm. and think of what a satisfying story is that you can tell that's open-ended. So mm -hmm. hopefully there's a future beyond that that season, but what's a satisfying story uh, to tell within however many episodes you're doing? Uh, and that's a that's a really in fun process to think, you know, we're all, all the all these, the audience members these days, everyone's so hip and to story structure in some way. We mm -hmm. consume so much of this stuff. Everybody's got an internal rhythm of what makes a satisfying arc, a, a bingeable arc, you know, right. in a weekend. You watch 10 episodes these days. And uh, so it's just just trying to decide what that is, you know. Have you gotten used to the so new format? Let's say in the last decade or so, we've been binging shows. Yeah. Like we get that immediate satisfaction given to us instead of waiting the week or, or yeah. the season or whatnot. Yeah. How do you feel about that structure now of TV and the immediacy of it and the, the availability of it instead of having that sort of cliffhanger that you can stew on for a week or so? Well, you know, Epix rolls them out week by week. Mm -hmm. So if you're watching them in real time, you have to wait because they actually have a cable uh, right. uh, wing of what they do, not just streaming. But um, yes, if you are waiting long enough, you can see them all at back to back. I love that. I mean, one thing I love is not having to restate the premise. In the old days, that was a big thing is this fear that a viewer tuning in would have forgotten what the whole show is about or certainly what happened last week. So in the opening moments of the episode, you and I would say, oh, it's so good to see you, my brother, who's been gone for two years and <laughs> just showed up last week, and I'm jealous of you, but we've also reconciled. You know, that would be the, in the dialogue right out of the gate. We don't really do that anymore. Audiences are really smart, and they remember, and we have a little previously on. That's enough to get everybody up to speed. So it's great. It's great. You can just move forward with new stuff. What favorite shows do you binge on? Is there anything that you enjoy that's out now, or even going back now that you can see what streaming services, different shows? Is there yeah. anything that you particularly enjoy to get away and yeah. kind of just... I mean, I, I've been under a rock a little bit the last six, eight months making this show. Uh, I came out and started watching Success and started catching back up with okay. Succession. Uh, big fan there. Just watched uh, Chernobyl. I'm loving everything that Epix has got going go. on now. Epix has a whole slate of stuff that we're very proud to be uh, with. And uh, and I'm a Sopranos fan as well from way back. So, yeah. And finally, did you see the Joker? I mean, that's been a talk around town the last yeah. few days. Everyone's talking around here, even on a carpet. Did you see it? Did you hear anything about it? I'm a huge Joaquin Phoenix fan. I have not seen the film yet. I'm excited to see it. I'm curious. I have no expectations one way or another, but I'll see anything he's in, so I'm, I'm in already. That's a good approach right there. Davey, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you.